What's going on guys, Custom back at you with another video and today we're gonna be talking about this new patent that actually has surfaced in Japan and it talks about an EF to RF mount adapter with an active cooling system. It sounds good, but is it good? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel guys, Gaston right here and if you're new to this place I do gear reviews, tutorials, behind the scenes so if you enjoy the content around here consider subscribing to my channel and enable notifications for more content like this one. Now let's process for a moment this pen. it talks about an EF to RF mount with active cooling system so in order to use or take advantage of this mount you actually have to go backwards you know, uh, you actually have to use EF glass. Now imagine buying an R5 or R6 and also investing in RF glass and all of a sudden like discovering that one of the ways to mitigate cooling is actually going back with the EF glass. So it kind of makes no sense and it kind of like works backwards and so this makes not a lot of sense to me because Canon should find a solution that actually works with the RF system natively with the RF glass, right? That makes sense. Now one of the problems that most camera manufacturers have been having when cooling off a sensor that is mounted on an IBIS is that the sensor is actually moving so therefore there's no way for you to have some sort of uh, heat absorption element that can dissipate the heat so apparently Canon has found a way of doing it through the mount transferring all the heat from the sensor to the mount even though if the sensor is mounted on an IBIS. Now pretty good implementation but like I mentioned before the way that this is going to work it just makes no sense because you're gonna have to get EF glass in your brand new RF mount type of camera so I don't know what they're thinking I don't know what the real problems are I mean I don't know what you think let me know in the comments down below but it seems like Canon is trying to do anything they can to actually mitigate uh, the heat problems that they're having. Now they're gonna have to actually nail it because they're planning to release more cameras and obviously they're not gonna go back to 1080p right they're gonna continue to produce cameras that are going to produce even more heat because they're gonna have more capabilities but you know doing it in this way I think is kind of like you know um, I don't know what to do and this is the base that I could have thought and here it is a product so hopefully you know it's just a patent hopefully this product may not actually come to life because I think that they should focus and a solution that is going to enable the RF camera work with the RF glass without none of the heating elements. Now one of the things that they could do, they could probably do an RF to RF, you know, if they can actually find a way to transfer the heat to the mount, maybe they can add an adapter that, uh, you know, can be kind of like a heatsink, you know, basically, and work with the RF mount. Now, I don't know why this patent talks about an EF to RF, because to be honest with you, it should be RF to RF, and you know I made a video about the Tilta uh, solution which is kind of like a fan with a cooling plate and uh, you know it looks okay but it is also like an add-on that you have to put in the back of the camera and once you have it bolted in or once you have it in place of the screen you cannot flip the screen or close the screen anymore so it's kind of like a workaround but it's not a you know substantial solution. Now Canon is going to be in deep problems if they don't mitigate the heat issue and unfortunately they're not going to be able to resolve all this heat issue with firmware updates so something is going to have to give here you know for the R5 and R6 to really find its place in the video uh, world because other than that I think that the R5 is going to be a great camera but you know a lot of people are reporting those problems a lot of people are talking about like not even being able to shoot for more than 30 minutes and this is something that all Canon cameras uh, basically have for the past so not only the overheating is a problem but you also are capped to 30 minutes so for example people that should interview they're not going to be able to take advantage of you know unlimited recording 30 minutes the camera's going to shut off you're going to have to go and press so to add to that the R5 having all these issues with the overheating I don't know you know the Sony a7S III is going to be announced tomorrow and this camera promised not to have any overheating issues and uh, it's not gonna have any of the high-end features but I think that Canon try to put way too much technology or way too much resolution in a DSLR-like type of body you know so apparently this is a real problem you know Canon trying to mitigate the heat issues what are they gonna come up with we don't know but definitely they need something quick before people start canceling those R5 and R6 orders for video. I'm assuming that the R5 is going to be an excellent camera for photography and that's one of the main reasons why I'm actually getting the camera but I'm also planning to get the A7S III. Anyway so cooling problems for Canon let me know what you think drop your comments down below and as always guys make sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this type of discussion and as always I'll see you again in another video. Take care.